okay people so here is gmax and you've got a whole toolbars there you've got a whole selection of tools over here and down here you've got some really useful measuring tools and adjustments and other tools down here don't worry about any of it it's all really looks too far too complicated at this stage what you want to be able to do is to create some simple um, model and then take it from there so let's go over here in the top left where we've got this um, menu and object type we we'll choose box don't worry about any of this just come over here to the perspective view you've got three well, you've got four views here the top of the object left side front and perspective and you can change all of these if you want to but let's just keep it simple so here's a box now all I did to do this is I held down the left mouse button at the point of origin where I wanted my box to start and then I keeping the button down I just dragged it out this gives you your two dimensions and then I let go and went up and clicked again to stop it and that creates the box and here's the dimensions of the box in meters and if we go up here to our selection tool and we select the other box and we have a look at um, its parameters we see it's a different size so this button here is the one that leads you into your standard primitives your basic shapes and you're going to use maybe three or four of those regularly a teapot I've yet to find a use for don't know why it's there this button here the next one in is once you've selected an object it will give you details about that object and you can do other things to it then so you can edit it so this is like your creation button and this is like your edit button don't worry about these yet we'll come on to them so there's our two boxes we've got one there look with all its measurements and we've got another one there with all its measurements okay well that's all very good in meters but supposing we don't want meters well then all we need to do is to customize the measuring system and we'll come down here to the units setup and instead of going to metric I would always recommend to use US standard because it gives you feet with decimal inches and that's more useful when using um, Imperial rather than you know they're calling it US standard here um, using Imperial to have decimal inches rather than fraction of the, the alternative fractional inches and there's others there as well if you want them but this is the best one that's the one I always use and stick with that so if we just click on that click back on our box here and now we see that we've got a length of 124 feet 2.924 inches and then 128 feet 2.75 inches and 93 feet 11.724 inches okay completely useless for us at the moment because it doesn't mean anything so having selected that box we're now just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard and get rid of it there it is let's work with this one 224 feet we're well, supposing we were going to build a factory and the basic size of the factory is 224 feet in one direction it's um, maybe I don't know 150 feet in the other and it's maybe about 70 feet high so let's have a go at that so over here instead of trying to jiggle about with this one we're just going to go up to here to the length the longest one there highlight it by holding down the left mouse button and just going across 250 just type it in from the keyboard and press enter whoa there it is it's gone to 250 feet or rather bizarrely 249 feet 12 inches well you know you can't have everything um, and okay let's make that let's change this one now to say 150 feet that's, we think that's the 184 one uh, so we come back over here back over to the measurements and we'll just put 5 0 because we kept the one so 150 feet enter there you go it's 150 feet by 250 feet and the height's too great now so we want it to be maybe 75 feet so let's highlight the whole lot that's using the left mouse button and just like I say in um, word or something like that 75 feet high there you go okay so now we've got a box it's going to be a factory but it's just a box at the moment so if we move it around so 
the tool that I'm using there is down the bottom here on the right. It's a little um, rotation tool. Frankly, it's about the only one I've ever found of any much use down here, apart from these ones around the animation, but we're way away from that. Uh, the other one that's quite, quite useful here, the setting, is to use this angle snap toggle. Just turn it on, and then when we, we'll find when we have to rotate things to a precise amount, <coughs> for whatever reason, then um, it will give us exactly degrees or points of a degree rather than all sorts of wacky subdivisions. All these others, I don't know, I've just never, I've never, I mean this one down the bottom right is quite useful because it was, it does, what it does is it extends this screen to full screen like this and then you can click it back again and okay fair enough, you know, so it's quite handy occasionally if you've got to get in close. So let's go back up here to our selection now if you go up to these little titles here, perspective, front, top, left, and right click on them, you get a little menu. And first of all, it means you can change any of these windows to different views. Though I would advise keeping these, they are by far the easiest. You know where you are and you rarely get lost. You need to have a top down view, you need to have a front view and a side view. But you could change the left view to the right view if you wanted to, but keep this perspective one because it's showing you what you're doing all the time. And also you'll see here it's, it's highlighted smooth and highlights. Now what it does when it creates an object is it gives it a random colour. doesn't really matter about that at all. We're just going to use it to distinguish that particular item. Uh, and down um, the next one, if we didn't want to see the, the surface, click on wireframe and we get the same result as we get up here these are the wireframe images but like this one up here if we go up to here click on smooth then we've got another green side of the box but they're quite useful keeping them in wireframe most of the time but the perspective I prefer to keep as often as much in smooth and highlights and some of the models can get really complicated so you know you've got to work out where you are okay so there's the notional ground surface that's the grid and I, do, I always keep the grid on very very rarely turn it off when I've got to do some fiddly modeling but turn it back on straight away because it gives you a basis from where you're working from it gives you your location and your location of course in a 3D model it's got three coordinates it's got um, an X coordinate it's got a Y coordinate so that's side to side front and back and then it's up is the Z coordinate however that's not necessarily always the case when you're working with these boxes because sometimes GMAX has some sort of a hissy fit and it decides to change which is which. But, you know, it doesn't make a big issue and, and once you get used to it, it's just second nature to, to deal with it. You can see the coordinates down here, look, bottom left of this screen, turning around as I turn this around. Okay, okay so that's the rotation tool I'm just using there to play around with. If we go back up to our selection tool and select the item and I can't do much else with it apart from select it but if I go up to the four arrow tool that's select and move and I grab it then we can do all sorts of silly things with it move it around and maybe um, you know by accident you move something away or you're working on it somewhere another part of the grid but you want it centered back on x, y, x equals zero y equals zero z equals zero or rather z equals with the bottom end of your box on the zero line and um, once you've moved it around how the heck do you do do you get it back well it's pretty straightforward uh, what you what all you do is you look down here down the bottom you've got x y z and this is the coordinates position of your box you can see I'm changing as I'm winding that around you can see it going crazy up here as well You've already got the Z is zero because I haven't moved it in any. I've only moved it left and right and back and forward. Um, but if I was to go up to here and choose Z coordinates, then I can go up and down with it as well. That can be a bit of a pain if you move it by accident. But often you have to adjust the height of things to fit them in. Obviously, you, know, you don't want a chimney pot at ground level unless it's fallen off. You know. So you know when you put the roof on, you definitely need to have access to all of the three coordinates and supposing you, you produce something you left it hanging in the air there and you really want it back down to its zero coordinate well first things first remember where the center of your object is and the center of this object is at its 
base it's in the middle of this plane the lowest surface x and y and the z coordinate is not halfway up the box it's in the middle of that okay so just knowing where you where your object is is really important and um, to get it you, you want to get it back to the z equals 0 x equals 0 y equals 0 come back up to your move and select cursor and just come down here I don't even think you need that let's have a look we're just moving it around oh yes we do yeah <laughs> yeah I've forgotten that so I can just count here hit 0 and immediately it's at the 0 position of the x coordinate come along here 0 and it's a 0 position of the y coordinate and then along to z and if it's if you know that your center point is on the bottom of your object press naught and that brings it back to its original position all items when they're first created um, no that's not true now they don't I was going to say they all go to the middle to this point but they don't you can make it make something up anyway if we go up here and make another box we can make it wherever we like that's not it XYZ zero is it so uh, let's get rid of that so that's our box now if we look at the coordinate here where are we? there we are once we selected it for move and select put it back to zero there and instead of just affecting the z axis as you can see that's highlighted here we'll highlight x and y you can you can also highlight you know there's pairs of these at least i think there is oh well it used to be maybe i just can't hit it anyway um very rarely do you need to use x and z together or something daft like that uh, but if you've um, got all those at zero and uh, but in fact what you need is for your the center of your object not to be at the base but to be in the middle of it both x and y and z so how are we going to do that well again we're going to come up to see if i can remember which one it is now first time this one and it's not that one that's the one it's the third one along uh, and you're going to affect the pivot the pivot is that center piece and you're going to center it to the object see how it jumps up and then a really important aspect and this you must do on all your models before you export them to trains especially if you spent ages producing um, the uh, say um, valve gear on a locomotive is you must align it to the world because the, the trains um, graphics engine is going to find that alignment and place it correctly and if you've got lots of little bits all working together and all moving away together and that's part to do with animation and they've not all been aligned to the world when you load it into trains you get piston rods flying through the sky and bits and pieces underground it's crazy okay so We've, we've we've done that and that's quite a, you find yourself going back to doing this quite often um, and it's, there's nothing to it, it really isn't so there we are so now it's aligned um, to the world if we go up to our move and select and select it we now see whoops we now see that the um, that the center coordinate is not just on the x and y coordinate it's also now centered still on the z coordinate but centered within the middle halfway up the object okay so that gives you an idea of just getting something looking like something in trains uh, let's have a look at the green again let's put it back to where it should be which is naught and you can just tab to the next one naught naught ah problem well the problem is of course is because we've moved the z coordinate which is the vertical coordinate it means that it's putting the z on the zero position of the z so half of it is underground and half is it half it of it is above ground so unless you're building a um something which is half underground um and even then you wouldn't want to do it like this uh then we've got a problem here so what we have to do is remember let's go back how tall it is it's 75 feet high okay so that's that coordinate there so half of 75 feet is 37 and a half feet so 
that will move it up 37 and a half feet if we type put the center there we are just typed in the keyboard 37 then the single inverted comma gives you the feet and the five well that's no good because that's five inches It'll be six inches you see why i always make a hash in diy um and then press return well, up she goes there we are so now the bottom of the object is on the isn't zero on the ground well i found learning gmax um, which really alarmed me to begin with but realized it didn't matter at all is that sometimes you have x and y going this way and it's described as length and width and sometimes when you start mucking about with a piece of uh, of a model you find that the height is actually the width and the width is actually the length and the length is actually the height according to this over here but uh, don't worry about that it doesn't make any difference whatsoever so long as you've got the final object all aligned to the world coordinates um, you're going to do fine so my advice is to have a first go at gmax by creating a box and just playing around with it and just using just a very few tools just get used to them especially this rotation one and this one the selection one and the select and move one and try um, altering its size you can always alter its size here uh, alter its size adjust it move it up and down play with it get its position back to zero zero x and y and somewhere with the z wherever you want it so the bottom is sitting on the ground not floating in the air my first ever model i exported to trains was a wheel and it was hanging in the, in the sky like the moon so that was daft but you know i was delighted because it, it was working and i could actually knew what was what i'd done wrong i just brought it back down to the correct height and it was fine still a wheel on its own no use to anybody but uh, hey you know you all gotta start somewhere uh, what else to try around um well you got moved now the next one along from there is this one which is the just the rotate Ooh, there we are we can just turn it around and you see down here it's now changing not by feet and inches but by degrees and it's jumping at 25 at five degree increments and that's because we've got that turned on if we turn it off it'll go by all single and bits and fractions of 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 uh degrees and it can be a real pain so keep that turned on i would recommend because five degree changes are going to be fine you know, when you have to do some finer one you can turn it off but then turn it back on again because otherwise you're all over the place and you left it there in the wrong place just go back zero it okay play with it play with this get into making spheres there you go there's a nice big sphere make a cylinder that's drawing it out with the left key down, left button down on the mouse and then letting go and playing it up and then clicking once more and you'll see it's all got different things in it don't worry about any of that yet i'm going to come on to all of that in the next lesson but just play with this use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom back and zoom in okay and uh, if you then flick over to this window we can zoom in and zoom out I mean, we, can, we can put the smooth and highlights on if we want we can zoom in and zoom out and just play around with it get to that stage if you can do that you're halfway there to making a model believe me it is not complicated just get used to where the tools are and what they do but don't be worried about things that you can't i mean if you go up to the you know if you've got something highlighted like a good old box and you come up here and you've got things like bend and taper and twist and mesh selects and unwrap UVWs and you don't worry about any of that yet we'll come on to that that's all to do with textures so get into GMAX get playing make things and the sky is going to be the limit okay that's the end of part one